96 hours later is day four. Legs. Yes, legs again. This time you will start with leg extensions and follow immediately in superset fashion with Smith machine or free weight squats, but don't do hack squats unless absolutely forced to do so. Hack squats are not very productive and they stress the knees inordinately. You will perform the leg extensions differently this time using approximately 30 pounds more than the last time when you perform the leg extension with the leg press. You will do but one positive rep, lifting the lower legs until they are in the straight leg lock knee position. You will hold that position statically. This is called a static hold rep. The weight will be sufficiently heavy so that you're limited to holding the straight leg lock knee position for approximately 10 to 25 seconds. There will come a point during that period, of course, when you won't be able to hold it anymore. And you'll say to yourself, if I don't start to lower this thing in the next moment or two, it's going to go crashing down. Do not let that happen. When you recognize it's necessary, lower the leg slowly in controlled negative fashion, not hyper slow or imperceptibly slow, but under strict control all the way down to the bottom. And make sure that you keep your buttocks planted firmly in the seat, as there is a tendency to want to come up off the seat when your thighs are burning and torque it down. Do not torque it down. Lower with the strength of the thigh muscles alone. Then proceed immediately to the squat and perform 8 to 15 reps to failure. Take a rest for a couple minutes. Go get some water and finish once again with a set of standing calf raises 12 to 20. And then four days later, you start over with day one and repeat the four workout protocol as already described. Whenever I have a superset listed, as with pec deck and incline press, or leg extension leg press, or leg extension squat, start the warm up on the second exercise. For instance, when performing the leg extension squat superset, if you start with the leg extensions without having first warmed up the glutes, spinal erectors and so forth, by doing a couple of sets of squats first off, as you finish the leg extension and you're heading to the squat, you'll say to yourself, but my goodness, I forgot to warm up for the squat. Same thing with the incline press and the leg press. By warming up on the second exercise first, you cover all your bases in terms of a warm up. And you'll also have the weight set on that exercise so that you may perform a true superset where one exercise is followed immediately by another with no rest in between. And please don't change the sequence of exercises I've listed. Everything I've given you here was for a good reason, which is not to say that you can't periodically change exercises, although I would be hesitant, as the exercises listed are all the best ones for the muscles involved. And don't make the mistake of gauging or evaluating the success of any one of these workouts by the standard of feeling, whether or not you get sore or achieve a pump. I see certain people who have been training at Gold's Gym in Venice, California for hours every day for years. If achieving a pump was a surefire indication that growth was stimulated, these people would have 28-inch arms by now as they get pumped every time they work out. The pump, of course, is only temporary and does not indicate that growth was stimulated. And if getting sore was necessary, I never would have won a physique title as I almost literally never got sore, usually only after a layoff. You can only evaluate the success of any one of these workouts by whether or not you're stronger the next time you perform that workout. So keep a training journal as described in the value added booklet. I would suggest that if you have been training recently without a layoff prior to the time you intend to start this program, Take a break entirely from training for two to three weeks. Having been overtrained, you've made a deep, too deep, an inroad into your body's recovery ability. It is important that this inroad be overcome so that when you start with a properly conducted high intensity routine, your body will have recovered all the biochemical resources necessary for optimal growth production. Key takeaways from the four-day workout plan. The protocol focuses on specific muscle groups on each day, with day one targeting the chest and back, day two focusing on legs, day three emphasizing delts and arms, and day four once again targeting the legs. 
If you are going to implement Mincer's training philosophy into your own training routine, make sure to remember these concepts. Intensity. Mincer believed in training with high intensity to stimulate muscle growth and strength gains. And frequent training. The four-day workout protocol encourages longer rest periods between workouts, allowing for better recovery and muscle growth. Specific muscle group emphasis. Each training day in the protocol focuses on specific muscle groups, allowing for targeted training and optimal muscle stimulation. Mike Mincer's four-day workout protocol offers a structured approach to training that emphasizes intensity and infrequent workouts. By targeting specific muscle groups on each training day, it aims to optimize muscle stimulation and growth. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video and the information provided, please check out more of my videos and subscribe to my channel.